Pray. 
if you see someone new around you, say hello to them. And Merry Christmas. Compliment them on their ugly sweaters if you see any sweaters out there. Thank you for worshiping with us. Just pray real quick. Heavenly Father, we come to you with our hearts, with everything, just laying it down at your feet because you are the king and you are good. And what a wonderful time it is to be able just to dwell in the promise that you've given us, that we get to just remember the details of your, of your story. You came as a baby. You humbled yourself to nothing for us. And then we get to worship you for that. Um, so thank you for doing everything. There's nothing that stops you from, from being near to us and for saving us. There's nothing to get in the way. So we just love you and we give you everything because of that. Um, you're a good, good father. So we worship you and give you this time.
shadow No shadow you won't light up None you won't climb up No shadow. No shadow. You won't light up. Now you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down. Coming after me. There's no shadow. You won't light up. Now you won't climb up. Coming after me. There's no wall you. nothing that can keep you away so we just give you this time we just give you this season it can be chaos and crazy we don't want to forget what it's all about the most important thing in existence the most important thing ever you and your son and the promise we have with you so we just we worship you and we love you This is our Christmas choir, who have been practicing a lot for you guys. So they we're very really excited. Hard. They work really, really hard. So we have a song. Okay. One, two, three.
One more hand of, of applause. And actually, kids, if you want, yeah. Kids, if you want to, kids, you guys, we're going to move the benches. We're going to have an object lesson for you guys in just a few minutes. So if you want to, you can come closer. Come closer. We want you kids close. Awesome. Well, you've already greeted your neighbor, so that's fine. Why don't you just give them a quick high five. Just where, just where you're at, give them a little high five. A Merry Christmas shout. Excellent. Awesome. Yes. Excellent. Well, we're so glad. Man, what a great Sunday that was been so far. Yeah, I love it. There we go. Yeah. Kids, we got a special treat for you guys in just a moment. Yes, it's going to be awesome. Well, if we had never been introduced, uh, my name is Nate. This is my wife, Allison, and we are honored. Yes. Wow, you got more applause than I did. That's good. Thanks, guys. She deserves it. And uh, we want to just welcome you to Anthem Chapel, where we believe God's given us a vision as a church to proclaim the name of Jesus, that all would look to him and be saved. Amen. We have a desire to learn how to love and live just like him. So thank you for joining us on this Sunday morning today. We recognize there's a lot of places you could be on a Sunday morning. We take it as an honor that you would join us today. today. Uh, this is a church where you can be seen and known and loved. We want you to feel like you can be connected here. And we want to let you know that there are no perfect people allowed in this place. Amen? No perfect people. We are all sinners in need of a savior. And so that's what we are all about. Uh, we, if, you're, if this is your first time, we're so glad to have you today. Welcome. If you want to learn more about who we are, what we're all about, go to the Connect tent right there. It says Connect here. Go there. Find out all the things that are happening in the life of our church. Um, today is a special day. We're calling it a Christmas together. And we're going to have the kids with us for just a little bit longer. I'm going to introduce some special uh, missionaries. They're going to give a little object lesson, and then we'll dismiss you guys after the lesson. Does that sound good? All right. And off to church as well, we have our kids, uh, Mary Market, that we'll tell you more about. 
but wanted to quick celebrate. Last week we had our college uh, breakfast and finals. We wanted to celebrate. We had over 100 college students here last week. And uh, amen. And I think Westmont is still in the house. UCSB is gone and maybe Westmont still in the house. Right, yes, and I wanted to just say a special, a special thanks to Addie. Is Addie here today? Is she right there? Addie, could you stand up, Addie? She is graduating Westmont early. She's out of here, and Addie, I just wanted to honor you because you have been planted at Anthem your whole college time here, and we just want to honor you. We're so thankful you're moving back to Texas, the great state of Texas, and um, just wanted to say thank you for being planted in this church, for pouring, uh, being poured into here and pouring out here, so we, we're going to miss you, Addie, and have a great time graduating and starting off your life. Come back to visit anytime you want, Addie. We're blessed to have you. Awesome. And I just wanted to say, who was at the women's event this Thursday? Um, it was awesome. God was so good. And I just wanted to stand here and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It took a village to pull that off. We had over 550 ladies come. And um, it was a lot of planning, a lot of meetings, a lot of prayer. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. The day of, we had like 40 women in the kitchen chopping the amazing charcuterie bird, board that Allison Costello 60 made this feet, year. 60 feet, 60 feet of charcuterie. 60 feet of a charcuterie board. Um, Carolyn Ford, her organization, the design team, Leah and Corinne and Devin. Um, I could go on and on, but I just, from the bottom of my heart, want to say thank you. Um, I feel like God did an awesome work among our community. The unity felt. I got so many emails from girls from other churches just saying thank you. Um, so, thank you. Awesome. Excellent, excellent. Listen, well, we wanted to just uh, let you know a little bit about today. As you mentioned, as you saw, the kids are with us for worship. They'll be, they'll, they'll be dismissed in just a moment. Um, but we, the kids have been very hard at work during doing their maker's market that you wanted to share a little bit about. So, they have a cute little market over there that they have worked so hard on. It's adorable. You guys have to go check it out. And all the proceeds that they are going to receive are going to go towards World Vision. So they have done it out of their own little pockets, but they are donating all the money for World Vision. And as a church, we're raising money for rabbits, alpacas, and llamas. So random. But um, Goats. Oh, goats. goats? What's not there? Llamas. No I don't know, no some llamas. animals. But um, the heart behind that is just to teach these kids what it means to serve and to give. And so go check them out. They have like cute little overnight oats, bracelets, bookmarks, even little Legos. It's so cute. But that's kind of the vision behind it is teaching these kids um, kingdom giving in their hearts. So I was thinking, I was like, that's a big deal. They're going to get this money. They've worked all week on, you know, making these little things and they're just going to give it back to the kingdom. So support them. There's cute little things over there and just buy all their stuff excellent i also heard you can you are allowed to use kingdom cash oh yes because the ministry is going to make convert kingdom cash into american cash that's not true it's camp cash i mean camp cash okay the paper cash the paper cash <laughs> that we created do that awesome and also at four o'clock today oh yeah we're going ice skating so um we're gonna meet you... ice in paradise in four weeks maybe have a few more spots talk to pastor Lars about that but we're going to meet from four to six at ice in paradise and finish the day off together ice skating where your pjs come it's gonna be a blast blast but we have the whole smaller ring reserved just for us so it should be we got lots. christmas music and lights and it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be great fun. it's gonna be great and also want to invite you to church right after service not only is that happening over there um, we're going to have our missions team meeting after church. We wanted to invite you all to be a part of that. We're going to pray just for uh, the nations for a few moments. You're going to be introduced to Peter and Tammy Russell. You can say hello to them as well, missionaries from Africa, Tanzania. And, uh, and so that's going to be happening right after church. You're all welcome to be a part of that. And I also want to remind you, we're like 11 days from our Christmas Eve Eve service. Woo! It's going to be incredible. And uh, at 6 p.m. Thursday night, Christmas Eve Eve, and the phrase that the Lord gave me for that is, uh, don't hold back. For you guys, don't hold back. Pray, invite, bring. Our community is in need of hope. And the theme for that night is going to be a thrill of hope. So I want you to not hold back. 
be brave, be bold, invite your neighbor, invite your roommate, invite your, maybe your, your parents, invite your uncles and cousins, and invite everyone, the Trader Joe's worker, the person at Target that you're buying your t-shirt from last night. Go and, and invite them to this uh, event because I think they're going to meet Jesus and their life can be transformed. Yeah, we do a few big outreaches as a church, and this is one of them. So we started Christmas Eve Eve, our first year being a church, and we were like, hey, we kind of like it because there's so many traditions on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So it's Christmas Eve Eve, the 23rd, 6 o'clock. We're going to do a candlelight service. We're I'm trying about, to convince them. We're thinking about them. candles. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, wow. We'll see what happens. So. Our first year we ever did it, we did candles, and we did it, it in, the, in the Lutheran church. And there was wax all over the carpet, and it was just, it was trouble. <laughs> There's no carpet out There's here, no though. Carpet here. There's no carpet out here. We can do whatever we want. And then, uh, lastly, we wanted to let you know, as the heart of our church is to really be there for our community. So we have a thing we call Each One, Reach One. And we recognize that each one of you might know someone, a family in need, an individual in despair, a, a widow or, or someone that can't buy groceries or medical bills or gifts for their kids. So we want to be a church that reaches out to those families that are in need. So would you email us, maybe you know someone that maybe it's a neighbor down the street or maybe there's someone in your sphere of influence that needs some help this Christmas, email us at info at anthemchapel.com and let us know about that because we want to reach those needs this year. Well, let me pray for our offering and our time together and I want to introduce our uh, special couple we have today. Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for allowing us to be here together. We just ask as we um, spend some time in your word, as we spend some time together, you would speak to our hearts today. I'm thinking about, um, just thinking about those in need we think about uh, Kentucky and the tornado that happened a few days ago and those that uh, lost their lives. We pray for just your grace and your mercy over there right now. Oh, would you do it in Jesus' name? Lord, would you stir up our hearts to just be a church that is giving and thinking about others. We praise you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I want to introduce to you today uh, to a, a couple, Peter and Tammy Russell. Before I do, we're going to show a video about them. They're going to come up. Uh, but Peter and Tammy Russell, I've met them first when I was a kid's pastor at Calvary Chapel, Santa Barbara, many, many decades ago. And and what just struck me was their heart for Jesus. Uh, what struck me was their passion to see the lost saved, the saved ignited, and the um, and unreached people groups get to know who Jesus, who Jesus is. And it's been great to uh, get to reconnect with them. They'll be sharing this morning. But I wanted to just introduce them by a video, let them know a little bit about what their ministry is all about. And then they're going to come forward, that little object lesson for you guys, and they're going to be teaching us today. So please show the video. <laughs> Baby, hold on Just another day to do You can see the clouds are moving faster now And the sun is breaking through If you can hold on To the ones that's holding you There is nothing that can stop this crazy Love from breaking through Well, breaking through But we really wanted to share with him About the love of God And the relationship with Jesus. Uh, we gain a lot about the mission work to go, uh, that it's time now to awaken the, the sleeping dance, the ministries, and uh, to serve God. Come on, move a little bit closer, your head on my shoulder. So baby, hold on, just another day or two You can see the clouds are moving faster now And the sun is breaking through If you can hold on, to the ones that's holding you There is nothing that can stop this crazy love from breaking through And the stars are up there shining for you Oh, how the Father does adore you His love Oh, and you and I, we were born to follow The hope that will lead us to tomorrow No one
Excellent. Please welcome Peter and Tammy Russell. Honored to have you guys today. What a blessing. Wow, you guys, it is so exciting to see the thrill of hope in this place. The joy of the Lord is all over you guys. We were able to be here before everyone started coming in, and it just keeps building and building as the tent gets full. And I know that a lot of the things on that video might be like just a little glimpse and a little taste, but you can sure see the enthusiasm of worshiping the Lord with all their body. The Maasai love jumping and expressing with their guttural sounds. They don't even need instruments to worship. They are so full of the love of the Lord. And I'm bringing you greetings from your Maasai brothers and sisters in Tanzania and from the folks in Arusha, part of the Wild Hope team, um, uh, the, the African the, the custom of bringing greetings and receiving greetings is a real thing. So I'm going to be, hands, so, is, so we're, giving, we're you giving you the greetings you guys them from like Tanzania this? and we'll be taking them back. And we just want to say how much at home we feel here because you guys celebrate Jesus so well. And so I just want to say thank you guys for having us. And I'm going to give it over to Peter who, th by the way, we're grandparents, and because our, we've grown up in Kenya and Tanzania, and our kids have, I have the grandma name of Coco, because that's the Maasai name for grandma. And that is, isn't that like so cozy, Coco, that I get to be Coco? And so we were going to have him be, is. and my grandson is Milo and Archer, and we've got Rex, and we've, we've got Zephaniah, and then our little girl is Ruby. So we are very blessed to be spending Christmas with our kids all together from coming from different parts of the world. So having um, a Christmas with you guys here, with you kids, worshiping the Lord and looking so cozy in your jammies is just such a beginning of Christmas for us. And this is Bubba, because our grandson couldn't say Babu, which is Swahili for grandpa. Yeah. So <laughs> this is Bubba. Yeah, I'm Bubba. In Swahili, Grandpa is Babu, but our oldest grandson couldn't say Babu, so he says Bubba. And then my African friends say, what does Bubba mean? I said, well, someone who's kind of overweight and not very smart. <laughs> hi, guys. Hi, kids. How are you? Any of you been to Africa before? Anybody? No? Any of your kids? What, what, what do you think of when you think of Africa? Deserts and plains. Dangerous animals. What kind of animals? Wait, wait, go ahead. You had your hand up. Giraffe and rhino. Okay, so you pick an animal, and I'll tell you a story about that animal. Right here. A lion. I'm so glad you picked a lion. Because that's what you think about when you think of Africa as lions, right? You guys know what a lion sounds like? Are you serious? Rawr? Maybe on Disney Channel, but here, here's what a lion sounds like. Ready? And when you hear that in the middle of the night, I love this because I'm 13 years old emotionally, so... When you hear a lion like that in the middle of the night, it scares you because you know they're big. A lion is this high at the shoulder, and the head is up this high, a full male lion. I have to tell you a funny story. There's the Johnsons are here, the Becks. Are the Becks here someplace? I'm going to tell a story about the Becks. There they are. So Danny Beck came out and stayed with us, and we were living out in the Masai Mara at that time. We went and we got stuck. 
we went out and got stuck with our car. There was a mud puddle that was about a foot longer than my car, and I got stuck in it. And we dug and dug and dug and dug to get out, and finally we got out, but by that time it was dark. And there were some Maasai guys who had come to help us get out of this mud hole, and they said, oh, we, we, we can help you. We can help you get home, and, but take us home first, and then we'll show you the way. But they got completely lost because it was nighttime in a car, and they didn't know where they were. And there's a lot of animals around there, and we were driving. All of a sudden, we came on this field, and there was like, it looked like cows. Somebody left their cows out because Maasai keep cows. And I go, why do the Maasai keep cows out? Danny Beck was in the back of the open pickup with our friend Francis, and we're driving around, and I stopped to look at these cows. And I'm looking at these cows, and all of a sudden I go, those are not cows, those are lions. It was a pride of like 18 lions, and they're all around our car, like right next to our car. And I'm like, whoa, this is cool. And then I remembered Danny and Francis in the back of the open pickup. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no. And I drove off, and I stopped about a kilometer away, and they jumped out. And Danny said, are you trying to kill me? And he jumped inside. And uh, I said, I'm so sorry. I didn't know you were there. I said, what did you do? He said, we just kind of slowly, slowly <laughs> leaned down inside. Yeah. Lions. One more story. What other animal? A rhino. A rhino. Do you guys know what a rhino sounds like when it's charging? <laughs> and I've heard one charge because he charged us. They're hard to find these days. But a long time ago, when I was a kid, because I grew up in Africa, my dad was driving, and we came, and all of a sudden, Rhino just came right out in front of us on the road, and he put his head down and started charging us. And my dad was in a borrowed car, and he forgot where reverse was. <laughs> and so as he's trying to find reverse, the Rhino's getting closer and closer, and I'm like, Dad, Dad! But eventually, he did find reverse, and we reversed, and we got out of there. But rhinos, the Maasai, back in the day when we had a lot of rhinos, they had a game they played. Because rhinos like to sleep in the middle of the day, and they sleep sitting up. Isn't that crazy? I love your face. You like stories. So they sleep sitting up, and the Maasai warriors have a game where they come, and if they find a rhino sleeping, they'll take a pebble, and the first guy comes and puts it on the back of the rhino. Then the next guy has to do what? Another pebble. You know that game Jenga? Another pebble on top of that pebble. And so they keep building, 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 building until they have this big stack of rocks on the back of the rhino. But guess what? Somebody's going to put a rock and it's going to fall, right? And then what happens? Here comes the rhino right at you. Isn't that crazy? Masai have different games, right? They don't do video games. They do like real games. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Uh, let's clap for the kids as they go off to Sunday school. A cheetah. Thank you. You know, I actually had a spiritual object lesson and I totally forgot. Oh, well, I'll have to tell you parents and you'll have to finish the story, okay? But anyway, we had a, a young boy, Matayo, and he was a Maasai. And he loved um, us, and we loved him, and we, uh, he was probably the bravest kid I ever met. And uh, he was, one day when he was out with the sheep and goats, a cheetah grabbed one of the sheep. And he, as a little boy, about this big, ran up to that cheetah and hit it with a stick and took the sheep out of his jaws. And, uh, and Matayo grew up 
and uh, he was one of the smartest kids that we knew, and we helped him go to school, and uh, he actually did excellent first of his class in primary, secondary, went on to university, but in university he got involved with the wrong crowd, and he just went downhill, 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 until the point where his parents didn't even know where he was. He was lost. He was lost to the community. And his mom was one of our artisans, and she um, came to our land and, and had all the ladies lay hands on her womb and pray for her lost son. And uh, within two months, somebody had said, you know, I saw him in the big city in Nairobi. She sold a cow, and she used the proceeds to go and find her son. And he was, had dreads down to here. He was living on the streets. And she came up to him and said, my son. And Matayo turned to her and said, are you my mom? And um, they were reunited. And he said, take me home. And uh, he was able to be taken home. His age mates were so overjoyed that they, uh, they did an offering and, and uh, raised 20 goats like you guys are raising, and gave him all these goats to start a new life. Within a month, he had been married to his childhood sweetheart, and he came and was involved in my son Skylar's wedding because they were best friends growing up. <clears throat> and the story is just, you know, we're celebrating Christmas. We're celebrating, you know, Jesus coming because God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And, and, and the heart of the Father, the heart of Jesus, is to seek and to save that which is lost. And anyway, so I was going to tie the animal stories into that story, and I totally forgot. So you parents, tell your kids later, okay? I'm timing myself because I am a Maasai missionary, and 35 minutes is just introductions. Cool. If you have a Bible, turn to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you, and I'll make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. And so you shall be a blessing, and I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for... The blessing of Abraham. I thank you for the way you called Abraham to leave his people and to go. And Lord, even today, you're calling us to leave our people and to go. And somehow in that leaving, somehow in that going, that your kingdom grows and your kingdom goes forth and the blessing of Abraham continues. Thank you, Father. Thank you for Anthem. Thank you for what you're doing here. Would you be with us today? May you bless your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I love a good story. The Maasai are great storytellers. Um, and I, I think the greatest story of all is this one that we see right here in the call of Abram as he left his people, and followed God. This is God's story. God's story is to seek and to save that which was lost. And we are called as the children of God to teach our children this story, to tell it over and over again. Deuteronomy 6-7 says, And you shall teach these things diligently to your sons, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lay down, and when you rise up. The story of blessing. It began in a garden, as we all know, where the Trinity said, let us make man in our own image. And Adam and later Eve were created. 
And there was this loving relationship. This so beautiful, a garden nurture was given to them, and God would walk with them, and they with God, and they lived in holy and awesome relationship together. But then Adam and Eve chose their own way. But immediately, God set into motion the story of redemption. He set into motion His mission to seek and to save that which is lost. Romans 5, 17. For if by the transgression of the one Adam, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. You see, the die had been set. The storyline written. Jesus had, was, God was preparing to send his own son so that he could redeem the relationship that was broken. But there is this large gap. There is this large gap be- between then when they sinned and when Jesus finally came to die on the cross. And in that time, there was a, a growth and people that filled the earth. And uh, it says that they went and they said, let us build a tower. You know, you know the story of the Tower of Babel. They said, let us build a tower to our own greatness, to our own humanity. And God said, you know, this, we cannot let this stand. So he came and he confused them and he, 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 he broke them up into different languages. And those of you who speak different languages know how challenging it is to communicate cross-culturally. And uh, with Maasai, they speak like this. You guys have no idea what I said. You guys are all looking at me like goats. Language is a beautiful thing, but it's a divisive thing. It keeps people from being together. And God said, we need to uh, confuse them and scatter them. So he, he brought different languages, and they spread throughout the whole earth. Then, in his unfolding of the mission, Jesus came at the right time. He came, and he walked on the earth. And he came as a little child, and he was born to bless. And he came as a little child. I wouldn't have chosen that story. I would have him come in as a mighty warrior and set things straight. Don't you, I mean, don't you want to see that, Jesus? But he came as a little child, and he came in vulnerability. And in that place, he grew, and he showed us by his life and by his action what's it, what it means to be a follower of God. Jesus said, I do nothing that I don't see the Father doing. And he lived in communion with his father. And he came, and un, the, 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 unlike what the disciples felt, he ended up going to the cross. And the disciples weren't into that. They were like, no, you, you're here to be the Messiah. You're the one who's going to set us free from the Romans. You're not going to a cross. You're not going to die. And Jesus told Peter, get behind me, Satan. Because he knew that he had to fulfill what he was called to do. And he did. He went to the cross. And do you remember that on the road to Emmaus, these two disciples are walking and they're so dismayed. They said, we thought, we thought he was going to be the one. And now he's gone. And then, then Jesus comes and meets them and they don't recognize him. But in the breaking of bread, they recognize him. And they said, when they talked to each other after he disappeared, they said, were not our hearts burning within us as he talked? And they ran back to be with the other disciples. And then Jesus met them. Luke 24, 44, and 49. He gives a game plan of the entire book from Genesis to Revelation. He gives a game plan in Luke 24, 44 to 49. He said to them, these are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and rise again from the dead on the third day and that repentance for forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things and behold, I am sending forth the promise of my father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power on high. 
What was he talking about being clothed with power on high? Well, we read about that in Acts chapter 2, when all of a sudden the spirit fell and there was tongues of fire on each person above their head. And the people were perplexed and said, how is it that we each hear them in our own language to which we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Figria and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya around Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them in our own tongues speaking the mighty deeds of God. Language divided everyone at Babel, and God used the Holy Spirit in language to bring the church together and to birth the church. In the Holy Spirit, the nations come together again. The things that divide us becomes things that unite us in the Lord, in the Holy Spirit. When I'm sitting with my Maasai brothers and sisters, and you saw how they dance and sing, Yalanamaraya, it is joyous because there's nothing I learned growing up that was anything like that. But as I, I worship with them and as I've learned their language, I realize they love Jesus just like I do. And they have a father just like I do. And we serve the same God. And it's amazing when you begin to do that, when you begin to connect with people around the world, you begin to realize the truth of revelation when we will all be before the throne and we will all be singing in Maasai. You guys ready? We'll all be singing in Spanish. We'll all be singing in all these different tongues and languages, and we'll be worshiping the Lord together. It doesn't say Baptists and Presbyterians in Calvary Chapel. It says people of every trung, tongue, tribe, and nation. I can't wait. The Holy Spirit is the fuel of mission. You see, the mission of God is not a part of the Bible. It is the Bible. The mission of God is not a part of Christianity. It's the core of, mission, uh, of Christianity. That Jesus, the Son of Man, came to seek and to save that which was lost. Blessing. Abraham was called to be a blessing. That in him, all the families of the earth would be blessed. Blessed. Blessing is kind of lost on Americans, but on, in Maasai, it's very much core to who they are. The elders get together at any big events like weddings or big ceremonies. They will have times of blessing, and they stand up, and they, they're usually, if they, not the Christians, but the traditional Maasai, they got to get a little bit tipsy first, and, and they start giving a blessing. And everyone says, nigh. Nigh means amen. So be it. Let's try it together. Nigh. So then they say blessings like entorropilo, and you guys say nigh. But you're not wanting to say nigh because you don't know what I said, right? Entorropilo means smell good. That's a good one, right? Entorropilo. And then they'll say entao losho, become a great people. And you say? Entorropilo anangurunga enkiteng, be fresh and smell good like the mouth of a cow. Wait a minute, where's the nigh? May God keep you in his armpits. It's lost in translation. But it is beautiful to see the way they love to bless. And they know that what it means to have a fatherly blessing. And Abraham is the father of our faith. And we enter into his blessing as we go into all the world. Your story. Every single one of us has a story. Every single one of us has a way that we were made. Every single one of us, it says in Ephesians 2.10, have good works that we are called to work in, live in and work out. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't it awesome to know that we, each one of us, has something, has something, a gift that God has given us that he wants us to use for his kingdom's growth? You know, some people, we have this thing going on in Africa right now that if you go into ministry, you have to be a pastor. No, you don't. You can be a ministry wherever you are. 
I firmly believe in the priesthood of all believers. And wherever you go, wherever you are at work, you are a, a little Christ in that place. You are somebody who's representing the kingdom of God in your own way, in, in wherever you are. So it's beautiful to see that God has given us a way that our story can fit into his story. And what is his story? The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. That's his story. That's the mission from Genesis to Revelation. And, and we get to join him in that in bringing our story, bringing who we are to the table. But there is something that has to happen first. You have to die. Matthew 16, 24, then Jesus said to the disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. A cross is a symbol of death. Wait a minute. We just read that we have special gifting and, and that we're his workmanship and, 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 and we're called to walk into good works. We have unique ways that we're to bring to the kingdom of God. What's this part about denying ourselves? How do these two things fit together? Well, in the upside down kingdom of God, the only way to a spiritually fulfilling life is to die. You can't go around the cross. Not even God could go around the cross. He sent his only son to die on the cross. Matthew 16, 25 says, For whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. It's really interesting that the word life there is suke in the Greek, which is your soul, your bent, your personality, your giftings, your likes, your dislikes, the gist of who you are. It's what makes you you. That's what suke means. It's what makes you you. And, and the Bible says if you love that part of yourself, you will lose it. But if you lose that part of what makes you uniquely new, for God's sake, you'll actually gain it. It's a total contrast to the age of self-realization and self-awareness when it's all about you be you and, and learn who you are and, be, and realize who you are. But the Bible says, lose yourself in the kingdom of God, and then you find out who you are. It's completely upside down. If you die to finding, nurturing, and the promises of yourself, and you put me first in your life, the Lord says, you actually will find your real self. I love adventure. I always have. I love motorcycles, like Nate said. I've, yeah, I've done some crazy things on a on motorcycle, including charging an elephant that was try, trying to charge me. And so he was coming at me. So I turned around and did a wheelie back at him, and he took off. And uh, I love motorcycles. I always have. But I, I felt like when I was growing up, my parents were missionaries in Ethiopia. I was born and raised in Ethiopia. And I thought, I would love to do anything in Africa, but not a missionary. I do not want to be a missionary. Not at all. I was going to be a game ranger. I was going to work with wildlife. I was going to do whatever uh, would fulfill me as an adventurer. But God started working on my life, and he brought me through a series of surrenders. I was at Westmont College. Westmonters? Um, went to Westmont. Ran out of money, so went to UCSB. <laughs> and the best move I made, because I met my wife, Tammy, at UCSB. And, uh, but at Westmont, uh, we had led a group to Kenya. And Westmont asked me to lead a group the next year. And uh, we had gotten robbed the first year. It was actually really violent and terrible. And uh, everyone who we interviewed for the second trip... Um, knew that story. They knew about it, but they were just signed up and ready to go. And I was just going home, and the Holy Spirit convicted me as I was interviewing these guys in the Christian Concerns office there at Westmont that I was not surrendered like these guys I was interviewing were surrendered. And so I actually resigned. And uh, do you guys, older generation, remember last day's newsletter, Keith Green? Anyway, yeah. There was a ministry called the Holy Ghost Repair Service in Hollywood. And the one place that I never wanted to be was in the inner, inner city. And God called me right to the inner city. 
and I, I graduated from UCSB, went and started working in uh, South Hollywood. I was working with Hispanics, helping get kids out of gangs. They called me Blondie. And we'd drive their lowriders, you know. And uh, one night we got jumped by, uh, now, at that time it was a very small gang. It was only about 50 individuals. But now it's one of the largest in the world, MS-13. And we got jumped by MS-13 in a pizza parlor. And uh, we were four guys, and I'd been working with these guys and teaching them the gospel for about a year. And, uh, but they, none of them had ever given their life to the Lord. Is that Gary Grootsmark, Peter Mather? In his pajamas? <laughs> Hi, Gary. <laughs> anyway, where was I? <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Yeah, so we're, we were um, together. I was getting these guys out of gangs. None of them made their, given their life to the Lord. Um, we crossed Western Boulevard, and George, the guy who was head of our club, wanted to go to this pizza parlor. And I said, George, we've just gone into MS-13's place. He said, don't worry about it. I'm from nowhere, which means I'm not affiliated with a gang, which wasn't completely true. And he says, I'm, I'm from nowhere. And so we cross Western Boulevard. We go into this pizza place. Sure enough, they come and start throwing signs. And I'm like, George, let's get out of there. There's four of us. And he goes, no, 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 no. I'm from nowhere, man. I'm from nowhere. Anyway, long story short, we get trapped in there. And this was before, um, well, anyway, the LAPD in, in those days would show up afterwards. And uh, anyway, we got trapped in there 30 of this these ms-13 guys came in with family and this guy was like yelling at george you were the one who stabbed me you were the one who stabbed me and he was lifting up his shirt and showing showing us his scars and and i was just a white boy from the suburbs you know and i was like can't we just get along and you know can't we just talk about this and so i get in between and and the guy is pulls out a knife and is starting to try to stab george who's behind me and so he's stabbing on this side of me and that side of me. And George is jumping back and forth like this. I'm like, hey, let's just, let's just talk about this. And I touched his shoulder. And as soon as I touched his shoulder, it was like something just switched in him. And they grabbed me and threw me against the wall. And I heard something. I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. Peter, you can't fight violence with violence, even if it's just touching. Just stand in between and pray. The guy's mother came in with a broken bottle. You are the one who stabbed my son. And they pushed us all the way in the back corner. I talked to the people working in the pizza place, called the police. They're hiding down underneath the counter. They said, we did, but they don't come. The police are much better now. I, I love the police and I, I praise the LAPD. But at that time, it was a different story. And they backed us in the corner. There's four of us. The guy on me has an ice pick up against my throat and it sharpened ice pick and he had these demonic red eyes long dreads and i'm thinking this is it and i just felt the holy spirit call me to pray i raised my hands and i said in the name of jesus i bind this spirit of violence and all 30 of those guys turned and ran out of the pizza place the guy on me his eyes were red they turned from anger and and total complete just violence, they turned to complete fear, and he ran. And then they were outside, and they were like, well, what are we doing out here? And they tried to come back in, and I raised my hand. And this, guys, I'm not a spiritual giant. This has nothing to do with me or my character. This has to do with the power of God. And I said no in Jesus' name, and they couldn't walk into the door again. So they slid all of our tires, and they ran off. <laughs> then George... Finally, the police came, and I was talking to them. And at this time, George, who wasn't quite unaffiliated as he let on to be, all of his guys began showing up in their little pickups and their sawed-off shotguns. And they said, we know where they went. Give us a signal. Because he had to be the one to give the signal. He had to be the one who would say, let's go get him. And he said, he came to my house the next day. He said, I looked at you. And I looked at all we've been learning about God, and I couldn't do it. 
and the cycle was broken in Jesus' name. <laughs> George gave his life to the Lord that night. The only way he was able to survive was to move out of South Hollywood. He has a family, and he's, uh, yeah, completely settled in Orange County now. But the power of God. The word of God says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and preach the gospel, making disciples of the nations. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. All authority, I'm with you. And in the middle is, go. Now, this is not just for us who go cross-culturally. This is for all of us. All of us are called to enter into the redemptive story. We are all born to bless. We all are blessed so that we can bless other people. And incredible things, awesome things happen when we go. Do you guys want to see miracles? Go. Go into what God is calling you to do. And going always entails discomfort that neighbor across the street that is kind of weird it's very uncomfortable to go across the street and to go and reach that person and talk to him and share the love of the lord with him but it's what we are called to do it's how our story fits god's story i guess i should tell you a little bit of i'm watching my time i'm being good about what we're doing. Tam and I, 30 years ago, left. And we were, had hands laid on us at Calvary Chapel. Gary was there. Uh, Pebble Hill, 30 years ago, we left. And we went to work with the Maasai. We learned their language. Tammy, 10 years before, had gone to Urbana. Anyone here have been to the Urbana conference? She got her call to missions at the Urbana conference. There was a, a woman by the name of Marilyn Laszlo, and she shared a story about translating the Bible with Wycliffe Bible translators in Papua New Guinea. And she was working uh, with a tribe called the Seper Iwam, and she was translating the Bible. And a man came down river in a canoe and said, I heard that you are translating the word of God so that we can follow the true God. Will you please come to my people? And she said, I can't. I'm just, I have too much work, but I will pray that God would send somebody. And the man left. And um, she couldn't get this man's face out of her mind. She would go to sleep, she would see him. And, and so finally, she packed up a canoe and took her uh, four or five locals with her, and they canoed up to this other man's village. And when they came into the village, when they beached their canoes, they looked out and they saw a, a church building, like a thatch roof with a cross on it. And they said, she said, I thought you said that no one had ever been here, that you hadn't heard the gospel before. She said, he said, no one has. But we saw where you were, that you were teaching about God in this building that looked like this, so we built it to be ready. <laughs> when Tammy heard that, she said, sign me up. And, uh, and we went. We went to Africa. We went to work with the Maasai. And... It was hard work. We tried to learn the language, and we entertained the entire tribe with all of our mistakes. Um, but they were gracious, and we, we grew to love them. They grew to love us, but they weren't making decisions for the Lord. And was, we had been taught to reach the older generation, and so we were talking to the older men, and, you know, they're spitting their tobacco. My <laughs> I don't hate this Jesus guy you're talking about. If you really want me to become a Christian, okay, I'll, I guess so. And I'm like, what? D did Marilyn Laszlo lie to us? She was saying that they're just waiting. People are just waiting to hear the gospel, waiting to receive the gospel. And, and um, it was tough. We had a tough time. But, and then we got sick. Chameleons, I love animals. I would catch chameleons, and the Maasai are totally afraid of chameleons. They falsely believe they're poisonous. They're not. I found this big yellow one, and I showed them. They, ay, 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 ay. Throw it away. Get rid of it. That, it'll kill you. It'll kill you. You'll get sick. And I said, no, look at this. And I let it bite my finger. They're just freaking out. Wouldn't you know it, the next day, I get hepatitis. 
not related to chameleon at all, but my eyes turned yellow just like that chameleon, and they're all like, told you so. <laughs> and then Tammy got hepatitis. And we were, hepatitis, it attacks the liver, and you actually have no strength whatsoever. We had to move to Nairobi. We couldn't even, I thought, oh, great, we'll catch up with our reading. I couldn't even hold a book up in bed. But finally, I knew I had to go back. I had to leave Tammy. I had to go back. There was stuff I had to attend to back in our new area down in Maasai in the desert. And I went down there. And my prayers were like hitting a brass ceiling. You know what I'm talking about. Those times we were like, God, where are you? I felt abandoned. I felt God had, had, had let us down. The next day I knew I had to do something of faith. And so I climbed the mountain behind our house. And with all the little strength I had left, I put these 12 rocks into an altar. And I put Tammy on the altar. And then I put each one of our kids on the altar. And then finally I put myself on the altar. And I said, Lord, if you're going to reach the Masai, you're going to have to do it yourself. Because I can't do it. And it was almost like I could hear this big sigh from heaven. And it wasn't like a magic turning of a switch, but things did change. And we began to see God work in some really, really cool ways. There was a big drought and the animals were dying and we had been fasting for 40 days and we we're like, Lord, where do we go? What do we do? And, and, and um, James Kukan, my number one disciple, he, he had a dream and he knew that God, God told him that the drought would be broken on Easter morning. And Saturday before Easter, just started pouring rain. And in his dream, he saw us around a water hole and we're all praising the Lord together. And then the Lord came in our midst. Wouldn't you know it? We wake up and there's these water holes all around us we'd never even seen before because of the rain that night. And we circled up and we began to pray and worship the Lord. And as we were there worshiping the Lord, wouldn't you know it? All of a sudden we hear, yeah, 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 yeah. And this delegation came from Tanzania. They came out of the mountains from Tanzania and they came to us and they said, We've heard that you know the word of God. We've built a building. We have no one to teach us the word of God. Would you come and teach us the word of God? And we came, and that was what opened up Tanzania. And we're writing a book right now, and we didn't even realize that the same thing that happened to Marilyn Laszlo happened to us, that these people built a building because they were ready and waiting to receive the word of God. We went and we started a church there and became the first church in Tanzania that has grown now to 45 churches that are established and 25 more that are young and upcoming. It all began because we believe God and he is faithful. All authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Go therefore. Did you know that going necessitates crossing a boundary? That's uncomfortable. It, 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 I mean, I remember the first time I went into a Maasai house. It's so dark. Just go. <laughs> I remember the first time walking into a Maasai house, and it's so dark, and it's been over, and you're going in like this, and you can't feel anything. And, and there's this, I, finally I feel this big post, and I hold on to this post, and I get down in there, and I sit on the bed. And then afterwards, my eyes get used to it, and... And a Maasai elder comes in, and he just walks right in or bent over, and, and he goes like this. He goes, the, the big snot thing, and he wipes it all over that post that I just had grabbed. I said, Lord, why did you bring me to these people? It's not easy crossing boundaries, but we are born to be blessed. Jesus was born on this earth to bless, and the blessing that we have the blessing that you guys have here in Goleta is not for you alone. It's for the nations. It's for the nations. Okay? And, and no, you know, there's 7,000-something unreached people groups, and they're not going to be reached unless somebody is willing to leave the comfort of their home and to go until others are willing to send those people. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, but it will and Jesus' return, he's waiting. It says, you know, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the world, and then the end will come. 
So guys, there's people who are hearing me today. There's young people who heard the stories this morning who are called to go. Don't plug up your ears. Don't sing the song. Please don't send me to Africa. Because he will. And it's going to be good. My adventures, the adventurous self that I thought I was giving up to be a missionary, God has completely restored to me. I got to plant churches on motorcycles. Isn't that awesome? I was sharing about that in Orange County, and this old, older lady came up and said, my husband used to have the motorcycle racing record, and I was so blessed to hear you talk about motorcycles. Could you use $10,000? Because I shared about a motorcycle. God knows who we are. He knows how he meant us, how he made us. He has good works planned for you. But you cannot say, Jesus, I just take a little bit of you, but I don't want your mission. You, you can't love God and not love his mission. And this book, From Genesis to Revelation, is about a loving God seeking and saving that which is lost. The Lord bless you guys in Goleta. We love you. Amen. Thank you so much, Peter and Tammy. I love your notes. That's exciting. Well, I'm going to invite the worship team to come on up. We have one last song to sing, but uh, we're so blessed. One more time for just Peter and Tammy Russell and all the work the Lord's doing in their life. And we as a church, uh, we as a church are just praying about how to partner alongside them and how will the Lord uh, lead us in that way. So we're so thank you for spending a Sunday with us. Again, a missions prayer after our service will be right uh, by the picnic tables. Go meet them and pray for the nations. Uh, what a great song. Would you just mind standing with me this morning? Let's close in worship. Maybe there's something the Lord's been putting upon your heart, stirring in your heart. We'll have the prayer team out uh, around the corner here to my uh, left, your right. And we love to um, just minister to your needs today. Don't let this Sunday just go by like another Sunday. Maybe the Lord is calling you to go. Uh, maybe not across the world, but across the street. And maybe this is, remember, this is, this is our time as followers of Jesus. This is our season to be bold and brave and courageous. All the authority has been given to you. And so, Father, we thank you for this morning, the reminder that we have been born to be a blessing. We're blessed to bless others. And uh, we thank you. For, we, we've been forgiven so that we can be forgivers. And so, Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this great reminder, this encouragement, just uh, I'm so fired up, Lord. So I pray for your spirit to fall in this moment, in this place. Lord, as we prayed this morning, who knows uh, who the next missionaries are coming right out of this church, Anthem Chapel. Who knows what seeds were planted today, right here, right now. And so, Father, as we just sing this last song, you are the king of our heart. You're the king of our heart. We surrender to you. Total surrender to you. Would you have your way with us? We love you, worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship prayer teams here.
are so good. You're so good. Lord, thank you that we don't have to work our way to God. No, you came down to us. Thank you, Jesus. That the infinite will become an infant. That nobility will become poverty. That the creator will become a creature. Oh, the goodness, you are so good. And you've never failed us. You're so faithful. You're so kind. And Lord, you're inviting us now, today, to join in your story. <laughs> that our story can be part of your glory. Thank you, Father, for that. May we hear the call. May we be people that say, here I am, Lord, send me. Use this this week. Use this the next week. Oh, Lord, help us to not hold back. We love you, Father. We thank you. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Amen. Give a shout of praise to our King of kings, Lord of lords. Amen. What a great Sunday. Well, we love to close our service with a little benediction. If you would like to just extend your hands and receive this blessing, Romans 15, 13 says this. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you would abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen, church. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. Hey, just keep coming back. We'll see you next week. Amen. Go use that camper cash right now at Maker's Market.